today the surah that we are going to talk about it comes in hadith about the the surah that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sitting with the sahaba <coughs> and asked them who among you is able to recite a thousand ayat every day a thousand verses of the quran every day so the sahaba said that ya rasulullah who will have the capacity the energy to recite 1000 ayat every day the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that can you not can you not recite this surah at-takathur al-hakum at-takathur if you recite this surah it has the reward in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of reciting 1000 verses of the quran so about these very little surahs of the quran that have come at the end little surahs have a lot of reward for example surah al-ikhlas it is <coughs> reciting it is it's equal to one third of the quran and some ulama say that it's actually in in terms of meaning as well it is equal to one third of the quran surah al-ikhlas and also in reward <coughs> so if somebody recites it three times they get the reward of reciting the whole quran once so anyway <coughs> this surah is a grand surah small in words but huge in meaning the first ayah is al hakum at takathur allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened the surah by as we had said that the last surahs from surah al duha to the end of the quran they have two basic topics going on one is the virtues and the high station of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the other is reminder about the day of judgment and cutting off excessive ties of people with this world which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like that people establish strong ties with this world and forget allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or such strong ties that hinder their connection and relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the first ayah starts with al hakum at takathur you have been deceived you have been engaged excessively in takathur takathur is something takathur there is a word in arabic and other languages it is also adopted kathra kathra plenty abundance of something so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is starting out by saying that all of you have been general the general human has been deceived by plenty by plenty the the blessings that we have given them they have disengaged them with their realization of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have got busy and they have submerged themselves and they have forgotten about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the day of judgment the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his hadith has also explained this al hakum at takathur <coughs> by tafakhur as well tafakhur is boasting to each other or competing with each other of what you have if you look at the lives that we are living especially in this country and more or less the same is going on the one thing that we are very worried about from our from the time that we gain sense of things we are made to compete with others we are made to compete and that competition is not for deen for the most part that competition that competition is coming from our parents from our friends from the people around us telling us to compete in the world and the things of the world with other people and this is something that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this has disengaged you from the reality this has disengaged you from the reality so this is something that each and every single one of us can relate to that we have worked hard for this dunya we've we've studied hard we work hard day in day out all for all for this dunya so that we could amass wealth we could amass wealth the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one day recited surah uh, this surah takathur to the sahaba and then said that the state of the son of adam ibn adam is that if they 
get a valley full of gold a huge place full of gold filled with gold then they are going to wish for another even if they have that much wealth they are going to wish for another valley of gold and then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that their hunger their thirst will never be quenched only with the dust of the grave only with the dust of the grave so they will keep on fighting they will keep on running after the things of this world and they will keep busy forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala neglecting their deen and then neglecting the, the, the day the life that is to come to everyone they will keep on running after this dunya until they will be put into their graves يَأْتِيكُمُ الْمَوْتِ this is where you will you will be overtaken by death suddenly it will come it will strike and it will be something that you were not prepared for أَلْحَاكُمُ التَّكَاثُرُ so the sahabas thought the Prophet ﷺ read this, this hadith is basically a very good explanation of the Quran the sahaba actually thought that the words of the Prophet ﷺ were the Quran itself but finally when the Prophet ﷺ recited Surah Al-Ikhlas again they found out that the explanation is of hadith and that is not part of the Quran but Al-Hakum Al-Takathur Hatta Zurtum Al-Maqabir which the next ayah says that you will keep engaged in takathur in amassing wealth in running after wealth and in running after one thing after another of this dunya till you will see you will witness your grave Hatta Zurtum Al-Maqabir that you will you will be overtaken by death and people will put you you will be put into your graves this is this is your state and this is something that we can all relate to may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us kalla Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says then repeatedly after the at the beginning of each of the next ayat three times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says kalla nay absolutely not absolute false that what you are doing neither is this world deserving of excessive engagement nor is the hereafter deserving of being forgotten Kalla Law Ta'alamun. Only had you known. Kalla Law Ta'alamun. Only had you known. This this is absolute deception. Only had you known. Summa kalla ta'alam. Summa kalla law ta'alamun. Again, we saying it we saying it again. Had you known it. Had you known it. Had you realized it. Kalla law ta'alamuna ilm al yaqeen. There will come a time where you will you will kalla law ta'alamuna ilm al yaqeen absolutely not only if you had realized and pondered over things around you you would have come to this reality if you had look, if you'd have looked around yourself you would have come to you'd, you'd have realized where am i headed and what am i doing if you only had taken out time to just think a little bit you would have found ilm al yaqeen what is ilm al-yaqeen? Ilm al-yaqeen is knowledge reaching to the point of yaqeen, to the point of concrete belief, knowledge. So through pondering, only through pondering, only through the wisdom that we've put within you, had you used it, you would have found this truth. You would have found this truth. لَتَرَوُنَّ الْجَحِيمِ You will definitely see you will definitely see all of you, each of you will see the hellfire. All of you will see hellfire. ثُمَّ لَتَرَوُنَّهَا عَيْنَ الْيَقِينَ In this world we gave you chance to use the intellect that we have put within you. But you made busy that intellect with things of this world. The wisdom that we had given you, the true right of that wisdom was to think about us and prepare for the akhirah but you kept it busy thinking about things of this world and amassing wealth and 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 trying to bring more and more so on that day you did not get ilmul yaqeen in this world that day we will give you aynul yaqeen that day we will put it before you and you will see it so even if you know it and if even if in the back of your mind it was there somewhere you will see it before you and that will be a shock that will be quite a shock to you the ulama and mufassirin under this ayah have written 
that when Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he went to talk with, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he would go there for a very long time sometimes. So when he was there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually gave him some piece of information. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him information that you are here, but the Banu Israel, the, your people behind you, they have started worshipping a cow, a calf. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam took this information, but this was ilmul yaqeen. He knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying the right thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not saying the false thing. But when he actually went back and saw for his own eyes what his people are doing, he was so shocked, he was immensely shocked that the papers of Torah that, was, that were in his hand, they fell from his hand. The, the, the book, the word of Allah fell from his hand. He was so shocked. So Ainul Yaqeen is something that when you actually see something, you are shocked, you are shocked even more. So this happens to us. Sometimes we get news of something. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all bad news always. But we get news of something, but it does not strike it fully until we actually see it for ourselves. So this is the phenomenon that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining that you have chance, get ilmul yaqeen. But either way, if you get it, if you get the ilmul yaqeen or the knowledge through taking in the information that we have put around you or not, will definitely give each of you Ainul Yaqeen for sure. You will actually see it and it will strike you with its presence. Something that you th thought was always a stories. Something that you thought was not true. Or with your action, you, you, you expressed that you do not believe it to be true. We will show it to you. You will see it. <laughs> On that day, after having shown you the hellfire, we will ask you about what you were doing here. We will ask you. We will ask you about how we had blessed you in every single way and how you returned to it. How you responded to our grace. How you responded to our grace. On that day, each and every single one of you will be asked. There's another ayah of the Quran which, which tells us a few things that every single person has and they will be asked. And they will be asked. Basar, eye, ears, well, fuad, your these these things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if you do not have any wealth, even if you do not have any house to live, if you do not have warm water to shower with, you do not have anything outside of you, these things have been kept within you, which are blessing enough from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will be asked, in the sam'a wal basara wal fu'ad. These will be asked, these will be asked to you. You will have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in hadith, that لا تزول قدم عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن أربعة. The feet of a man, the feet of a person, will not be able to move on the day of judgment until he has been asked and he has answered about these four things. عن عمري في ما أفنا. If I if I remember the order correct, the words of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم more or less. The life that we gave you, the life that we gave you, the capacities that we gave you, the way we grew you. You were a little child, we gave you happiness. Then you became young, we gave, we gave you passion and energy. Where did you spend it? Where did you spend it? What, in what things did you waste it? Where, what use did you put it, put, put it, put it to? عن عمري فيما أفنا وعن علمي ما عمل به. The knowledge that we gave you, the knowledge that we gave you. So it does not only refer to the knowledge of Deen, but it refers to your capacity of being able to do things. That knowledge that we gave you, what what use did you did you put it to? وعن ماله من أين اكتسبه وفيما أنفقه. The wealth that we gave to you. Where did you earn it and where did you spend it? Min aina tasaba wa fima anfaqa. How did you earn it and how did you spend it? Imagine that state, my dear respected brothers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make Allahumma hasibna hisaban yasira. May Allah, may Allah grant us an easy reckoning. An easy reckoning is that which is no reckoning. Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha was taught this dua by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that 
If you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma hasibna hisaban yasira, Allahumma hasibni hisaban yasira, that means if that dua is accepted, then there is no reckoning. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any single slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually makes to stand before him and make him answerable for the things that, they, that we have done here, we will never be able to answer. We will never be able to answer. وَعَنْ جِسْمِ فِيمَ أَبْلَى The body, the the body in which the, the perfect body that we gave you that is perfectly adapted to the life here in this world what what make what use did you put it to these four questions the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said not a single slave will be able to move without having to answer these questions may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us my dear respected brothers these are realities that we are with every single breath we are headed to it's not that only the old people need to be concerned about it. This life can end. There is no promise when this life can end. And the moment our life ends, Barzakh starts for us. The hereafter starts for us. So my dear respected brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done his part. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us warnings after warnings after warnings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us his mercy. But as long as the mercy is there, if we don't want to use it, then who can we blame? In this world, the Prophet ﷺ has told us, in, this, in fact this is part of the hadith that, that, that I just mentioned about the valleys of gold, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the tawbah, accepts the, for the, the repentance, gives repentance to those who asked for it. To, do, to those who asked for it. So my dear respected brothers, while on one side, we need to constantly remain engaged in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the easiest way to do it is to come to the places where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being remembered. And while we need to try our best to stay away from engaging excessively in this world, and as I've explained multiple times, excessive means you are engaged in it to a point where it be starts to be become a hindrance in your ibadat. You can't find time for your ibadat, for your Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the requirements that have been put, for, put upon you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are so much engaged in earning wealth that you don't have time for it. Or it, it is becoming a problem for you in, in those things. Or you start earning it through unfair means. Means that are not permissible by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or you start spending it where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not permitted it or where the love of this dunya and the wealth is more in your heart than the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If that is our case, we need to be really worried. We need to be really concerned about this. And we need to start asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. While on one hand we'll keep trying, on the other hand for all our shortcomings, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. And we have to keep on trying our best to gain from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by making dua and astaghfar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a realization. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding of the reality of this world and what we are running after. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change our state of affairs. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Brothers who have prayed the sunnah can do sunnah. Jazakallah.